Well, all right, guys. So today, I'm gonna show you guys the ultimate growth operating recourse. All right. So here's what I did about a week ago, two weeks ago, right? I saw these guys doing growth operating free courses. Ah, oh, growth operating free course, giving out the value, blah, blah, blah. And they've been in here for like three, four months. So, no one I know what I know what I gotta do and I know how to do it, right? I spent the last two weeks looking at growth operating free courses, growth operating videos, and I looked at every single one of them. To be honest, they all suck. <laughs> so today, you guys are getting the best of me, right? I spent two weeks making this free course. And it's not a free course where I'm just making it so you can go to my free school group, watch all the videos and upsell. No, because I don't sell you guys information. I sell you guys my agency infrastructure, but that's it. So today you're gonna get the best of me. And I'm being dead ass about this. And if you have a slow little, I don't know, whatever attention span that you have in this world, and you scroll TikTok every day, well I do too, but I mean, <laughs> it's different. Get with me, bro. Grab a Red Bull like I did. 3.59 a.m. And let's get crack -a in. So, this is all you're going to need in 2024, guys. If you're trying to be an op a growth operator, right? In 2024, this is all you're going to need, right? And in this video, I'm legitimately going to cover every single thing that you possibly need. From understanding the business model to finding the right creators, the right creators, not all fitness influencers, right? Because those are kind of easier to then outreaching to these people, how to reply to them, getting on a sales call with them, and what to say on that sales call, how to onboard them, how to build system for them, and how to scale them predictably, right? And you're probably asking me, who the hell is this kid? And why the hell is gonna give me all the Riz? And does he even have Riz? I have Riz, right? So I've been a high ticket growth operator, not just a growth operator, for a year and a half now. And I'm gonna show you guys today exactly how I scaled offers from zero to 100K a month and my exact strategies that I've used to do so. And even done so in 30 days. 30, count on your hands. One, two, three, you get the point. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick who I used to be. This is not no pity shit, right? I don't need no pity, but I went from this little kid right here, bro. Look at this dude, bro. Look at the hat. You know it was bad. You know I was cooked. Legitimately, I was actually a family failure. Like, <laughs> I'm joking right now, but I dropped out. Uh, I was the number one business school in Switzerland. I was dropped out. Uh, I was anxious, pretty much hopeful, hopeless about a year and a half ago. Um, and this business model legitimately changed my life. I feel like people always say it changed their life. For me personally, guys, I'm going I'm, I'm to give a buck with you guys. I was in school for six months. I dropped out. And after I dropped out, I legit was just grinding as my main. I lost all my clients from my short form content agency. And then when I started this, that first client of mine, it helped me go from this to then me legitimately. And I'm not seeing this to flex because it's actually a rented car, but it changed my life. I can now travel as I want to travel. I can see my family across the world whenever I want to. I can go to the hotels that I want to. And that's just actually what it really is. The difference it did for me, right? And I actually have people that respect me way more right now. And so now I run a multi six figure agency. Well, it's not, it's part, now a run rate of seven figures. I, last year, we did 5 mil in sales for our clients in 2023. And it just gave me the ability to do ex essentially whatever I wanted to do. Legitimately speaking. I'm actually also buying a cop my, 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 like my, my first rock right now, right? Obviously, I've been saving, doing all that stuff and everything. It, it's, it's not the materialistic the stuff that matters. But what I want to show you guys is that it legit changed my life. And if you don't believe so, after watching this, go on my YouTube, go on my IG, scroll down my reels, look at how I used to be, look at everything. Go to my Twitter, scroll down. And you'll find how I used to speak. You'll find how I used to be, right? I joke around a lot, but this is stuff I'm serious about, right? And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm making this right now because yes, it's gonna be better for my funnel, whatever it is, warmer, whatever, whatever you want to say, right? But at the end of the day, this business model it actually changed my life, and entrepreneurship changed my life. And I always just speak to a lot of you guys, and you guys don't afford it, or maybe some of you guys don't. You have less money. And um, you can't afford to buy, you can't afford to get Metro bus immediately, or you're not really sure and all these things, right? And the thing is, I see myself in you guys, right? And you guys probably just join, you want to get all the value and everything, but this is important stuff to me because I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately serious. In this video, I'm going to go very much so in detail. 
and whatever information I'll be giving you is very applicable information, right? And so what I want to do today is allow you to watch this entire course, give you as, as the best information possible. And with this information applied correctly, you can make upwards of 20K per month in one single client. That's what I've done. That's what I've done before, multiple times. And we're doing it again right now. Our clients pay us about 10K every single week in pure profit. But the one thing that stays true, guys, is that you have to act now. And the reason I'm saying this is because right now, there's all the, a lot of these growth operators popping in the space, but there's going to be more, right? There's going to be more of these people coming from Sam Evans, Alex Hermosi, from Eddie Cumberbatch, right? It, it's just going to keep on coming. So here's the thing. Even with the unconventional stuff that I'll teach you in this document, people are going to come for this space. And you legitimately have to act now. There's never been a time, never been a time in the market where you've had coaches that have so much traffic and all you have to do is get them and put a park in between them. That is why it's such a no-brainer. And that's why you have to make a move on it now. And I'm extremely serious about this. And there's a couple guys that have done so, right? I'm not here to clickbait you. I'm not here to show, oh my God, look at all these guys. But this is the absolute truth. For a lot of you guys that don't believe it's possible, don't believe it's there right? Now, give me half a second. Let me check if I'm recording or I might actually kill myself. Are we recording? Yay. Get with it. Anyways, <laughs> Sway. Sway joined the GA. Within literally three to four months, he's killed the 20k per month, right? <clears throat> and now this next month, he texted me, he's about to do 40k in cash collected. $40,000, bro. In three to four months. Because this is, it's still pretty untapped. Right? Another example, Mohiz, 31K per month. He used our exact strategies. Me and this boy used to talk at like 3 a.m. We were men mentoring him. Or Adrian, right here, French market. Legitimately, he came in a week and got a client. Second week, the first day of launch, he takes in 3K in profit with his, with his business owner, with his creator. So, guys, I'm not going to lie. I have to show you guys more wins. Look at these guys. That's fine. Look at here. More wins, more people that they were booking on calls. Tyree, second close for 3K and 50%. Muhammad, 10K, 12K subs on YouTube. 40% to 30K, 30K uh, is 60%. These guys, 10K a month in 14 days, guys. This is still the massive opportunity. Azar, second client close. His client gets 200 to 400 inbound leads per video. You guys know how much money that is. You know how big of an opportunity that is. Now, I keep on showing you these wins, but I want to clarify one thing before we quit. I do this because if I didn't show you that I know what I was talking about, y'all wouldn't listen. Y'all, you would get back to your little ass little videos and how to find a creator. Da, 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 da. No, this is it. Pen and paper, notebook. This is it. Right? So, now with what's being said, like I said, put your phone away. Tell your girl, you're busy, bruh. You got to get to the bag. Exit all tabs. Pay attention. The rest of this video, I'm going to dive into exact strategies that you can apply today. Right? That will literally land you a growth partner contract with a creator. You can make 10K per month from with a 90 days guaranteed. So no more BS. Tap in. Take a little phone ski. I don't care what time it is, bro. It's 4 a.m., bro. We tapping in. Take a little phone ski, put it down. Take the PS5, put it down. Put everything down. Tell mama you're busy. If thought is gone, so hold Ramadan, you know. You want to make it short and sweet, bro. Right? So here's a perfect example. Hey, name. If I could offer you a large database of married men looking to work with a, a licensed therapist like yourself and close the deals for you on a paper results basis, would that interest you? P.S. We just le we recently leveraged the system to help one of our clients add 50k per month to their business in just 90 days. Now, what you're doing here, bro, is you're going straight to the point. You have a valuable service and offer, right? Why? We're making it custom made because this person, right? Most likely they're not. Um, like our client was, they had we have a marriage offer, which means our client was looking for to basically for more married men to help them with like their relationship and their divorce. Right? But they don't want to go to a therapist, they don't want to be a better person, they want to go to someone like him. So that's why we use this. Right? So we go straight to the point, we use a valuable service and offer, a unique angle, right? We're hyper-focused on the results because people just want money. 
and immediately the wording is completely different, right? And at the end of the day, what we use is social proof. Now, if you want another untapped way of landing these creators, you gotta keep watching, right? And so let's say guys, now we got the attention on the offer. We, we know how we understand the offer. We, how, we know how to find creators, right? We know how to do everything, the yappa, 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 yappa. We're here now. We're getting off some calls, and let's say I just booked a call by email. Now what do I do? I'm stuck, right? So this gets to the point where a lot of you guys, I don't know why I'm pressing every single place. It's kind of pissing me off. It gets to the point where a lot of you guys, you're booking a lot of calls, but you're not closing deals. So now the question is, why is that happening? Right? You got to ask yourself, why am I not closing enough deals? That's most likely because of your sales script or your sales process. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give you guys exactly a high level sales script overview. Right? And a clear breakdown of what you should be doing on these sales calls. Right now, if you guys have watched, if you guys already watched the, the part where I go over the script in my earlier YouTube video, you can just skip a little bit further. But most likely, if this is your first time watching my video or you didn't watch the other one, then you got to actually watch this step by step because... Well, after I showed a couple people this, I got DMs about it every day. And I have friends of mine, guys in the GA pretty much, who use this exact similar one. Obviously, we make it more custom made for them, but the same structure. And they were like not closing deals, and now they are. So, this is the best you can get. Oh, I have no Red Bull, bro. I have no more Red Bull, bro. Oh, my God. All right. So, sales is broken down to two key components. Number one is discovery. Right? And the second thing is bridging to close. Now, during the discovery phase, you're doing, you're doing one thing. You're taking the prospect from a, a zone of sales resistance to a zone of intent. And we're going to do this by building a report, ask them specific questions about their business, and labeling them with a problem. Right? And what you want to do after that is overview their current state, their desired state, and the consequence of them not taking action. Right? So that process allows us to clearly segue straight into a pitch and a close, right? So if, if you're hopping on calls or if you're not confident in your sales skills, this is, this is exactly for you, right? So let's talk about discovery. Let's talk about report, guys, all right? Report is not small talk, okay? We're not here to talk about, yeah, I'm a, ha, 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 small talk, no, right? Yes, maybe for a little bit, but it's not BS talk. The whole point of report is to earn the right to ask the rest questions throughout the sales call without raising sales resistance. That is the whole point. Think about whenever you ask prospect questions, they're like, no, no, I don't do this. I do this right. I do this right. Right? I, no, 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 no. We have no problems. Then why would they be on the call? That's because you messed up report and discovery. Right? And you don't want them to view you as a sales rep. Right? You do not want them to view you as a sales rep, guys. This is why this report part is going to be very important. You need to build genuine report and you need to gain their trust. Now, like I said, report building, guys, should take a couple minutes. A couple minutes, little yappa yappa, quick yapping session, right? Maybe one or two yappuccinos, not 10, right? Right now, I got like 100 in me for this video. You're like Maybe like two yappuccinos. That's it. And you want to find a nice balance between, you know, transitioning to being a friend and being an expert. And in a matter of seconds, you can just move forward to the call, run it back. Now, let's talk about agenda real quick. A lot of you guys, you hop on calls, you have an agenda, you don't even know what's gonna happen, you don't even know what you're gonna do. Now, you need to do multiple things. Number one, set the agenda of how the call is gonna go, right? That's like just very important. Second thing, don't stutter, right? Relax. Set the agenda with confidence. Position the agenda in the best interest. You get them to talk about themselves first. This will also decrease their sales resistance. And objective, remove sales resistance all while proceeding the call to the next steps. Now, this is something I used to struggle with, by the way, guys. Like, it might seem like I'm perfect now, but, like, it, it used to be kind of a bit of an issue for me, report building and all that, because I would just yap too much, right? Some people, they don't talk enough, I just yap too much. But the one thing that did help me with setting agenda is, like, hey, let me set the agenda and be clear on what's going to happen. A lot of times we don't want to because we feel like we're telling them what to do, and we are. People want to feel like you're in control. People want to be taken in on a on a sweet date. You know what I mean? People want to be taken in by the arms and they want to be, they want to, they want to have structure, right? And you need to be the person to give them the structure. And if you can give them that structure, then they can, they'll trust you. 
right? So chill out in the beginning of the call, set the agenda correctly, and then move on, right? And what you're gonna to wanna to do during then is, hey, clarify why they're on the call. And during that phase, you're taking note of the process responses. This is a very important thing, guys. When you're asking them, hey, you know what motivated you to book the call? Do not miss that answer. You're gonna take a pen. I don't have a pen, so I'm gonna take a lip balm. This is really weird, but write down. Or if you're on the computer, type it up. Type up everything. Think about one thing, guys. When you're imagine you're talking to someone and they're taking notes of what you're saying. Don't you feel special? Doesn't your ego go all the way up? Because for me, it does. If I'm speaking, I'm like, yeah, you know, I did this and this, and someone just taking notes. Okay, yeah, and da, 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 da. that shows focus. That to me, at least, is like it boosts my ego, and it should also boost yours if someone's taking notes of what you're saying. That means what you're saying is very important to that person. And they really care about it, right? Now, guys, let's do another recording check because we don't want to be slow. We want to make a big mistake here. Uh, anyways. <laughs> now, guys, during this phase, right, you're taking notes. And you want to write down this answer, right? Let's say they, you say, why do you book the call? Hey, man, because of, I want to I scale to X amount of revenue and we're struggling with this. Okay, good. Now, what the average person would do is they would write that down and they would say, hey, you mentioned two minutes after, they would say, hey, you mentioned you were struggling with this. Not us, guys. Not us. Because what happens, guys, is if you get someone's pain of why they booked the call and you use it on them immediately, they don't trust you anymore. What happens psychologically in the head is they're not thinking. This guy, man, every time I give him one of my pains, he uses it against me immediately. And you don't want that. You want to keep that on the side. Take note of that and leave it for the end. Right? And so... Now what we're gonna do is, hey, we just wanna understand quickly, what's the situation? We wanna qualify them a little bit. So all we're gonna do is ask a couple of specific questions, right? Are they proper for the offer? Or do they meet the requirements to be in the ICP? Do they fit to work with us? Um, does our deal size have to be a certain amount to, for us to work with them? Whatever it is, right? You wanna qualify or disqualify them at that moment. Then you wanna find out the goal, right? So maybe ask them a question to find out how their prospect, basically their goals. So you can then leverage it during the sales call. Right? And then you want to figure out why is the goal specifically important to them? You want to uncover their desires, right? Again, it's a very step-by-step -step process. And then you want to do something called tactical extraction. So what you're going to do during this phase is you're basically going to take surface level problems and make them feel the emotional pain of it, right? People only buy when they feel the emotional impact of the problem. The B2B, B2C, it applies everywhere. And we want to make it apparent, right? You want to make it apparent that, hey, their current situation is tough, bro. If you're not making the money you want to make, it's, what's the plan? Like, where are we going with this? Where's the company going? And you want to label them with that specific problem, right? So find an angle they can sell the solution. Maybe maybe they're losing over 250K in qualified pipeline, right? And we're not able to guarantee them a high conversion on the pipeline. You want to take that pain, then you can then fix their problem when you want to make them the offer, right? And so the whole objective of this part is to make the prospect feel the deep impact problem. If that makes sense, right? So now we go over KPI questions. So during this phase, we just wanna know specific deals on their metrics. It's also important to ask these questions because the prospect may not know the answer. So if they don't know the answer, it's gonna make it evident that, hey, they're not making database decisions. And if they're not making database decisions, then how can they, how, how can they go? How, how, can, how, how can they go further? Like I say to a lot of you guys, is when you're on the call, guys, you're the advisor. You are their advisor. So if you can get them to realize that they're not even making database decisions. What am I doing? How does this guy know what I'm supposed to do more than myself? All of a sudden, switch, right? And what this also helps you do is you get more context of the operation, right? And at this point, this is where you got, guys, this is where you hit on the needle. And I tell this, I tell this to a lot of you guys usually when we hop on calls. I even when we mentor some of the students, we tell them the same thing. You need to sound genuinely curious. Hey, so, what are, what's your guys' booking rate at the moment? How many calls are you guys booking per day? What's the booking rate we're looking like? Okay. And I, I'm just like curious to understand how many how many people typically no show, how many show up, um, what does that look like? Uh, well, we don't really track that. Okay. And so once you know that, like, oh my God, we don't track that. Why don't we track that? And then you can dive deeper into that pain. And this sounds genuine. I'm genuinely curious, bro. I'm like, how many calls are you booking? Okay, what's happening with these calls? Are they closing, not closing? What's their closing percentage? 
you know, what, what's the follow-up close percentage when they're putting a down payment for 2K for, for an 8K payment plan? Are they paying? What's the percentage of people that are paying? Are we not tracking this? How are we not tracking this? How is the system not put together? Maybe if we had reminders for it, we'd have way more cash collected. And in this part, what you're doing, guys, is you're basically leveraging all that report you built up to ask these direct questions so you don't blow it, right? And again, that is why the report build is so important at the beginning, guys. It'll keep on catching up to you the whole time, right? So now we're gonna get something that I call the desired state, which is the vacation questions. You're now gonna to wanna to understand, you know, where does the prospect wanna be vividly? You know, how would it impact their business? How would it, you know, what are the conflict, what are the consequences of inaction? So if they were to not do something about it, what would happen to their business? What would happen to their life? We wanna make the, the pain Right, we want to. We want to. Why did I say paint? We want to paint a clear picture of what it would look like if they were doing well. You want to make them see the dream. For B two B specifically, you don't. You don't. Sometimes you don't have to get too creative, right? If they have product audience fit, they don't. Have, they're not making much money. Okay, they're making money, and they have product market fit. Then you can get a bit more creative. So ask about KPIs, their dream KPIs. Ask about their dream systems they want to have built out and leveraged. The dream team. Right, and now we then use this boys to go into consequence questions. You know, we want to send them through an emotional roller coaster. What happens if they don't move forward? What happens? What if, what if they don't take out? A, what if they don't take any action? What if they keep going down that route? Right? What are the negative consequences? And then you take them up this massive dream, and then you go, right? And now you guys can see again. This is frameworks. This is a way of thinking about the call. Or I'm not going into this like, I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say exactly this. No, you need to understand what type of journey you take them on during that sales call, right? And, and so now you're gonna have to widen the gap. Now they understand their dream and what's gonna happen if they don't make it happen. Um, we can now basically have someone admit they need help. So during this phase, what we'll do is we'll do multiple things. We're gonna create a gap in their ego where the prospect admits they need any help because of the problem. You should also very, you should still sound very genuine. You need to sound genuine and natural, right? And in this part, we want to figure out like, why us? Why no one else? Right? And if you do it right, they'll sell you exactly what you want to work with them. You know, and then you can even ask questions like, hey, you know, quick question that I have, you seem like a pretty smart guy. So, you know, why us? Why not try this, like, why not try this by yourself? Then they'll let you know why, and you tap onto that. And then you want to have commitment, right? So lock the prospect into making a verbal commitment to change, right? So you guys want to make change, yes. Reversing verbal commitments are always harder to people since they don't want to let themselves down, right? And then finally, we want to speak. You, you know, we want the prospect to prehandle their own future objection for us by getting them to say why they don't need to start now. So when you're basically doing this, guys, desire state consequence uh, questions and widening the gap. They're gonna tell you, basically tell you why they need to act now. What's the consequence if you don't move forward? This, and they're gonna tell you exactly why. And so now what we're gonna do guys, after we have all this context, we are gonna do something called bridging to pitch. Now the prospect in the zone of intent and they're ready to be pitched. Now you're gonna ask for permission. You're gonna let the prospect know they're a good fit. Then you're gonna ask for permission for them to share. You can leverage this report the friendship, the trust you've been building this whole call to present the pitch deck, right? Add scarcity to one to, to see the pitch deck. Add curiosity to them seeing the pitch deck. And always ask if they can see the screen, even if you know they can see it, right? So you can dial in their focus. Make sure they're looking at the screen. And while, they, while and then at this point, right? While you're basically sharing the deck and walking through the slide, ask them questions, temp check. Go back on the screen while you're speaking. Look at how they are. Are they... Are they are they focused? Are they mad? Are they confused? Are they confused? Ask them a question. Hey, um, you seem a little bit confused. Is there anything that, you know, um, I missed out on? Is there any questions you might have? Yeah, well, I didn't understand this. Temp check all the time. Drop price, handle objections, print. Right? Now, if you want to copy and paste sales script, uh, stay at the end of the video. <coughs> Whoa, vagabonda. Damn it. Okay. So now, 
we get into the saucy stuff. This is what you've all been waiting for, how to deliver. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to onboard clients, how to get free access to our onboarding plan, basically of action exclusive, basically, or to our high ticket one-on-one -on -one mentorship program. And so this is all our high ticket coaching program and you're getting it free. So stay here and keep on taking notes because I know you're, you're taking a lot of notes, dog. So I'm not gonna lie, I respect it. And then again, we check if I'm recording. Oh, look at this. Yo, I can see myself, bro. It's crazy. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be here for a minute if I keep on looking at myself like that. Anyways, so uh, guys, let's get into client onboarding plan of action. So how to, how do you conduct your client onboarding process so you can retain clients longer and deliver an overall great customer experience, right? This is the most important thing, guys. If you can't onboard clients well, what type of a good impression do you think you make on these people? Some of you guys, you close a client, you have no onboarding process. Automatically, the clients think you're just a little retarded growth operator and you just lose all the trust from them. And this is why some of you guys, you get a client, you don't have good onboarding and all of a sudden you're like, bro, I got this client, but he's not replying anymore. He doesn't want to launch, bro. He's not taking me seriously. Obviously, bro, because you're not behaving like an actual businessman. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how you're going to behave like an actual businessman, right? So I'm gonna cover client journey, onboarding form information, pre-onboarding plan of action, and post-onboarding call plan of action, right? So what is a client journey? Client journey is one of the most critical aspects of signing a client, right? And so to understand it, this ultimately means that you're basically your, your client experience from the moment they pay to launch a fulfillment is your client's journey, right? And so in the resources section, you can basically just find like a copy and paste, right, of a mind map where they is the client journey would look like right after. So here's a high level overview of what our client journey looks like. So we collect payment, our client is moving to our closed state of our pipeline, they receive an onboarding email along with a contract in their email. They fill out the onboarding form, once it's filled, they're redirected to our onboarding call page automatically, and we have a zap go to our Slack channel to let us know the client has booked a call and they filled their onboarding form, right? They now get an invite automatically to our Slack. And once they join the Slack, they will receive a welcome message by all of our team members. And then you, be, you begin working on your onboarding call, prepare your creation items, right? Then obviously you present game plan strategy call on the onboarding call and 10 days from onboarding call campaign launches. Now, if you notice above, this should be mapped out in logical order because this helps you create a very good customer experience and deliver a quality service in an efficient timeline. Do you guys see what a big difference this mean, this makes. Because now clients will be like, oh my God, these people are planned out. This is like, this is very well organized. And they now want to work with you even, even more, right? And so let's now go over a pre-onboarding plan of action. They fill out the onboarding form, right? And there's just a few things you have to basically work on immediately, right? So one, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that when they're booking a call on the calendar, they can only book a call 72 hours out. So you have time to prepare everything else for that onboarding call specifically. So once they filled that out, you're gonna do two things. One, you're gonna build your backend infrastructure. And two, you're gonna do your market research and strategy, right? We always start building my backend. Why? Because a lot of the backend infrastructure can be automated, right? And it won't really take up too much of your mental bandwidth. So it's like, a, it's like a lower level task that can be automated for the most part, right? So here's what it might look like for us. We're gonna build the client's go high level, right? We're gonna set up the calendar, you know, on go high level. We're gonna set up all the company emails for them. We're gonna be setting up the client's Notion SOPs. We're gonna be basically setting up the, their, basically all their Slack channel for the, them and their sales team. We collect their Facebook ad account, their business manager for whenever we do on ads. We're gonna basically set source and appointments that are for them, build out the KPI sheets that we already have pre-built, just place them for them. We're gonna use sales call recording automations to make sure that every time a call is being recorded, it automatically goes to our database. And finally, sales team EODs for the sales team every single day, end of the day, right? Now, as I mentioned, over there, the strategy is what's gonna take a bulk of the time, right? Because that's when the market research, a lot of more stuff comes in, right? Like I said, the back end is automated. We have everything set up as a as a process already, and we just and we just plug and play it every single time. So what does market research actually look like? What does strategy even look like? And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna analyze the onboarding form. Okay, what, what information are they giving us? And what we're gonna do then is go into Reddit groups. Google, YouTube, social media, and we're gonna do an in-depth market research for customer data. From there, we'll build the ICP analysis sheet. Look at their audience. How old are they? Where are they from? What do they do? 
What does their life look like? What do they hate? What do they like? What are their issues? What problems are they facing? And we're going to build a massive ICP sheet. And to then, we'll go into offer creation optimization. So we'll create the offer for them, whatever offer is right that we think is going to print. We do fulfillment creation optimization with, optimal, with an optimal pricing strategy. And finally, we'll write down this sales script and just ID on the VSL. Right? And then obviously, we have a launch strategy that I'll be including down below, so stay a little bit more. Now, before the onboarding call, we want to make sure that all these components of strategy and infrastructure are all set up, right? We don't want to have to last minute. We want to understand they're all good. It could be a Lucid chart or via a Miro board so the client can visualize exactly what we're doing. Again, trust building is happening along all this, right? Shows expertise, and we're going to be the authority on these calls. So now, additionally on these onboarding calls, you're going to go on and go ahead and do something that not a lot of people do which is making a filming day schedule for the launch campaign. You have to have a specific day where they're going to film the videos for the exact launch campaign. Because if you don't have you don't if you don't have that, then how are you going to really film the content to launch? And you want to make sure they even have a weekly filming day for to make sure content is always going out and you always have lead flow. So what does um what happens after onboarding in, uh, info is given to us, right? So now we have a strategy call, right? It's been conducted. Again, remember, we have 10 days within the onboarding call to launch. So what do we do after that? We do two things. We begin crafting the long-form sales letter. Well, actually not two things, way more. <laughs> we then begin crafting the long-form sales letter and the long-form VSL. It could be a VSL for a pre-call, post-call. It depends really on your type of funnel that you run. We can finish a sales letter in a VSL. We can have a sales process created, so pre-call, post-call flow, and CRM optimization. Sales team training, so training the client on closing, the setter on, on setting, and even more. Filming, day for launch assets, so launching content and VSL. So fulfillment build, so adding course material into school, et cetera. And then a, a quick pro tip, you have around like 13 to 14 day timeline from client close to launch. You must, you have to be efficient with this. Like your backend process like this, it needs to be on point. You need to have frameworks to be able to move with speed, right? And so here's a free quick success guideline you can leverage to do this. So like I mentioned, this is legitimately a, 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 like a, a section from our pay program. So if you want access to a copy and paste infrastructure, you can book a call with us like way below down the page. But for the moment, at the end of the call, I'll show you your entire st structure and what it looks like and how our agency operates, right? So you'll be able to, you can leverage our backend systems. So pretty much you can leverage our exact system that we use to build out for our clients CRM and sales process. So you can just have that as a template and just launch it immediately, right? You have a couple to your offer, but essentially it's the same exact system. You can copy and paste it. You don't have to go build all this out by yourself. Second thing is we have a full notion template that we use for all of our clients to operate them directly and them their sales team and sops for how their sales team can manage the whole operation so everything is sop right which i'll explain later what sop is right but everything is systemized then you can use our assembly line workflow what's an assembly line it's essentially a, a simple system to navigate through the client launch process and basically make sure they launch successfully on time so you can leverage our system for that too and finally after that <laughs> you can even um have our own launch strategy. So we have a proven launch strategy that's basically done multiple six figures just from launches um, in the process of, of leveraging you. And pretty much what you're gonna be doing here, guys, is you're gonna be leveraging our exact templates. So you don't have to be, just play the guessing game 24 seven, right? And so we spoke how to deliver, but now we need to talk about how do we get client results, right? So. This was how to deliver. I'm gonna go here on the left, guys. Now we're finding creators, acquisition methods, how to master sales, how to deliver, and now how do we talk about client results, right? And so we do so in multiple ways. You need um, you need another solid way that I'm gonna give you right now to get pure value from our paid program. Because at the end of the day, like, I can give out some free, but at the end of the day, like I'm, I'm taking, trying to take as much possible from it without ruining um, the game for everyone else, right? So what you need is a fully custom service delivery process to launch offers for your clients. And so what I'm going to give you today for free. So we've used this to essentially off launches only and make multiple six figures with high ticket offers, right? And we've done it to scale offers aggressively and fast. Offers that would make it 4K a month would make 15K the first day, right? So what we'll go over is what's the process? What's the high level overview of the launch process? assets you need for a successful launch and pro tips, right? So let's go over it. What is the process? Now, this is something we called quantum scale. 
So quantum scale is a process that will basically allow you to rapidly test new offers and collect cash. You can scale aggressively and fast. This system is basically a system that we created and we use organic content and marketing channels along with paid ads basically just to collect cash for your offer. So when you leverage this approach to validate your thesis, you're doing it fast with minimal cost. You do it organically most of the time, but you can also collect cash really fast and aggressively. And then as you go to scale with paid ads. So it's a three-step process. One, we launch content right around the offer through the week. So a long organic marketing campaign. Second, we validate using our sales process, right? So collecting feedback and fixing bottlenecks. Third, we scale with paid ads. Now, the goal is to quantum scale as fast as possible to 30, 50K in your first month on an offer. This is gonna allow you to gain leverage over your client, gain leverage over your team, but obviously mainly your client and build that trust, right? And so in the next part, we're basically gonna just show you guys a high level overview of quantum scale. So how does the launch process work, right? If you guys want access to this Lucid, you can just basically block it out, you can screenshot whatever you want to do, or just save the video, whatever you want to call it, but this is it, right? And this is what this looks like. Now, I don't need to go through this Lucid right now because we have it written down over here, but for the simplest, um, for the simplest way possible, it's called an organic launch. So day one, you just basically create the most viral reel. And while you do that, you just announce a big project you've been working on for the past six months, you'll be able to see in four days, right? Now, do the same, recreate another reel, and then do it in three days. And then two days, one day, and then on the, basically, the fifth day, right? And, um, oh, I missed a step, right? Oh, I forgot to say here in between. Is that in between when you're doing these launches, you want people to, like, comment for early access, right? So when they're commenting, get their leads. Maybe you want to have them do... Maybe you want to get them to opt into a specific uh, email, right? So you want them to opt into an email. Maybe you just want them to be in the DMs so you can actually pitch them in the future. Maybe you can get them in the DMs and book them on early calls, right? All that is possible. Then you can kind of find two and funnels usually as you probably you wish, right? A lot of us, a lot of times we do e we do mainly DMs, but we've also done emails a couple of times before. So both work. And then finally, you basically just want to acquire leads and book calls with people who DM. Right now, the last one, guys, is going to be CTA to DM. Right, CTA to DM. While the other one is going to be a CTA in the comment, and we're going to send them um, an email or some type of offer or some type of um, asset for free access for early access. So now that we're doing this, we're going to have to go through a validation period, right? And so we're going to do continuous organic marketing. We're going to review sales calls. We're going to collect data on lead quality and ICP. We're going to validate the sales process, show up rate, closing percentage pre call post low processes, right? How are we looking? And by weekly, you want to collect a minimum of $20,000, right? That's the minimum, guys, because some of you guys are going to have different offers. That is minimum. If you have a really good audience, you can do 50, 60, 80 grand, right? Fairly quickly. And now I want to talk about skin with paid ads, right? So you want to craft winning ads based on feedback. You want to set up ad campaigns. You want to run paid traffic the existing audience engagers and cold traffic if needed. So you want to start with retargeting campaigns, right? And then as you grow those, what's going to happen automatically is that you're going to run out of uh, people to retarget. You can go into cold traffic and add, bring, run cold traffic campaigns. That'll be, you can add, you can basically run engagement campaigns. You have more traffic to run ads to, right? Retarget, you have more traffic to run retargeting campaigns. Too. And then basically the whole goal is that you collect a minimum of $10,000 in a week from paid ads, right? So now from this process, we've been able to basically validate the offer organically, scale aggressively paid ads on the, on the basically last week of the first month and build momentum to the next month. Now in the clay, in the, just let's say in the case, right? The client doesn't have product audience fit, but product market fit starts immediately with paid ads, right? Considering they have capital, you can do so, right? And just ensure that they actually have content up. You can just, if they have product audience fit, just run ads. You can just run ads immediately. It's not really a problem, right? But if they don't, you have to A-B test offers. So here's the assets you need for a successful launch. You need a typed sales letter, you need a VSL, you need a pre-call and post-call flows, you need payment processors, obviously, you need a back infrastructure, some type of sales team, a sales process, an offer, a fulfillment system, client onboarding system, right? Systems, whatever it is, and then content for launch and market research, right? Now, a lot of stuff might sound like a lot. Personally, for us, it gets easier over time. It's hard in the beginning, but then it gets easier over time because we have templates. Like everything is templated. So at this point, um, in the beginning, it's a lot to set up. But then when you just rinse and repeat for other clients, it's just basically gets easier over time, to be honest. 
And the other thing is that no no one else in this um what was I gonna say no one else in this space has such like structures like us so that when whenever whenever I see other growth partners or growth operators or whatever high ticket growth operators work with clients, I'm like, bro, what the hell are you guys even doing? And so it's just like easier for us because we have all this stuff put together already, right? And so now I'm gonna teach you guys um how to refine back in operations, right? So operations is boring. I'm not gonna lie. It can really get boring for a lot of people, but it's a key part of business, right? It's really a key part of your business and it's really one of the most things, important things you're gonna wanna do. So guys, we're running up on 5 a.m. right now. Um, oh my God, what the hell is this? 5 a.m., right? We're still here. If you guys are still watching the video, I'm not gonna lie. Big up to you guys. Look, we're in one hour and seven minutes in. So y'all are tapped in, bruh. Y'all are legit tapped in, bro. I respect it. I'm not going to respect it. If I could, I would shake your hand, but hey, I'm too far right now, so whatever. Your boy's going to knock out a good dose of melatonin once I'm done, bro. Because I actually have a call in like six hours now. But this is the type of stuff I live for, man. It's exciting. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, no sleep. Anyways, let's let me get back to this, guys. So how do you refine back in operations, right? Now, you're going to do this in multiple ways. Right, you're gonna create operations and pro operation processes. Now, I have a team for this now, meaning I don't really, I'm not really as involved in these things at the moment. But what happens is, is that a lot of businesses bottleneck the amount of revenue they bring in just due to the amount of lack of a well-oiled back end operation machine. Right, and so this is what happens. So businesses that are twenty k a month, they're operate completely in a business running 100k a month same for business that's doing a mill a month and you basically need process in every single part of your business and a lot of you guys maybe one of your businesses might have like done roughly because you didn't have a system you were just a freelancer in the business and if you don't have the right processes guys you crash you crash hard right and so let's go over number one automation one of the key components to having a well-oiled system right, is you need to have a systems mindset. And by automating repetitive tasks, you can save time and reduce errors in the business. It could even be, each task could be 15 minutes. But if you stack up all of these, you save so much time and energy in your cognitive ability, right, so you can focus on higher level tasks. Think of your brain as a battery. And every single decision you have to make, every single thing you have to do, drains the energy of that battery. Now, if you can limit the number of decisions that you make by having automated tasks, you limit the amount of energy that your your brain is putting on things you don't even need right so to do so i'm gonna show you guys key automations that we use that help us basically the whole business so one is a call confirmation automation and you, you guys can screenshot all these by the way call confirmation automation pulse call follow-up automation call proposal automations pipeline to google sheets automations calls book notification automations call notes automation payment received notification automation Customer onboarding automation, lead magnet sent automation, call on booked automation, ads automation, if people have been booked from ads, daily team reports automation. All right? This is what automation looks like. How does it get into delegating? Right? So now when it comes to delegating, right, but before you before you bring in anyone, guys, you guys need like an A plus team. So you gotta choose the right people, give them proper structures, proper guidance, proper SOPs, and you're golden, right? So here's how you find really, 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 with a Deborah. Anyways, here's how you find really good talent. So typically guys in the group, they can get good talent from us. We can just basically source reps and people and help them hire out. But another method you can use, you can find talent inbound through the content of your client. They have a lot of followers say, hey, I'm looking for someone to basically help me out with this. Boom. Yeah, let someone help me out with this. Boom. Right. Or if you have a bit of social media presence, you can go on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, social media, and find communities that go around maybe copywriting, um, sales, operations, backend system guys, automation guys, and find the right people to help you. Um, and obviously networking, you, you use your connections to get good talent, people you might know. It's usually one of the best things to do. Now, essentially, other thing you can do is referrals, but essentially referrals are, are good, but like, nah, you know how it goes, right? Sometimes you might get referred to someone they're not the best. People just refer people because they just like to like their friends and it's just a bunch. It's, just, it's called it's gay operators. Now, here's here's some of the hires you guys are going to have to make, right? It could be closers. If you don't have any closers for high ticket deals, it could be appointment setters to set the appointments. Once you have a lot of calls being booked, a triage setter to basically see if people are qualified or not qualified, outbound DM, you know, teams, VAs. Um, 
I usually, if you're going to do ab on TM, you can have VAs, but the actual setter who's reponding is an actual, like a good person who knows how to DM. Uh, operational managers, client success manager, copywriter, and content person. Now, there are a lot of positions you're going to have to fill out, which the thing is you can combine these in different parts. It could be copywriter and content person, uh, and then it could be a CSM with operations managers. You can combine these in a different way so you don't have to have like a massive team. And the good thing is, guys, in the beginning, besides a closure and a, and a setter, you don't need anyone else. And if your client's small enough, they could be the close in the beginning. You can show them how to do sales very simply because they're, trust me, guys, when you're when you're the personal brand, it's much easier to close. We've had coaches that just close so easily because they're the ones who love the personal brand. And so once you basically pick the right type of people, you need to guide them towards how to do the jobs as best as they can. And this transitions perfectly towards SOPs. So let's look at it this way, right? What is an SOP, right? Which I'll explain uh, down before, but... In this part, we'll go over the fundamentals of SOPs and how you can build them, uh, basically, how you can build them. And um, a few I actually copy and paste that was just allow you to have. Um, they can just literally just steal from our, <laughs> steal from our, um, our playbook immediately. So here's a quick overview. You need SOPs for your team. You need SOPs for your clients as well. You will need basically them for your business. And this is going to shift your mindset. So now, what is an SOP? An SOP is a standard operating procedure. Right? And there's a backbone of scaling an efficient business. Now, read this as one of the most important things of this video. It might not seem like it, but SOPs is one of the biggest reasons why some businesses that you might see make a lot of money never scale. Because they allow you to work with multiple people for once and delegate tasks effectively and ensure consistent user service delivery. But what happens is people, they struggle with creating effective SOPs. So they can never get out of the business, right? And what we did is that we built SOPs extremely heavily. So let's just do a little dive deep into our agency and what our SOPs look like with our clients. So a quick overview is basically what you'll need is you need easy directory and simple role fulfillment. You need communication protocols, file management organization, time tracking and reporting, client onboarding and offboarding, invoicing and payments, right? Some of the stuff that we use. Now, by having these foundational SOPs in place, you basically make sure that everyone in the agency is on the same page and they all work together efficiently. So implementing these SOPs through our, our agency, it basically changed our life. So it allowed us to scale with more clients within our business. We deliver a consistent high quality service because we have SOPs in all of our clients love our systems. We can onboard and train people very fast and very quickly, which people love to do and they love to learn really well. And they love when we have SOPs. I cannot tell you guys how many setters and closers we've hired. And they're like, bro, this is crazy. You guys have actually good systems. Every other company I work at just sucks, right? And then you're gonna onboard and train new hires quickly, and you're gonna delegate tasks with confidence, and you can continuously improve your operations. So here's how to create an SOP, right? This is like the most simple way to create an SOP, and it's actually really cool, and it's gonna help you guys a lot. Now, you're gonna do one thing. You're gonna re replay the exact task from, from, blah, from scratch to finish, right? So start to finish, I'm yapping now. Um, it could be onboarding, specific job role, client SOP, et cetera. So you're going to write in bullet point format, step by step, right? What's happening first, all the way to what's happening in the end. So let's say, for example, how you onboard a client. You're going to go step by step everything you do for a client onboarding. Because if you want to hire someone else to do it, they need to know everything about it. Do not leave anything out. Pretend as if that person was like a monkey. And the monkey had negative IQ. And they had to follow step by step. You have to give them all the rules. They don't even have a human brain. And that's how you build some of the best SOPs in the world. And if they make a mistake, it's all your responsibility, right? That's literally how SOP works. Guys, an SOP is legitimately the same thing. You just literally give an exact step-by-step -step guideline on how someone should do something and give it to them and they'll just do it. And if they miss something, if they tell you, oh, I, did, I didn't understand this, you just have to refilm and redo it, right? So it's pretty fairly simple. Just people never think about it because people are too lazy. So now let's talk about how to build dial systems while you scale. Right now, thing is, guys, there's no perfect system. We're optimizing every single day. Imagine every single day you have to optimize. It's just how it is. But there's always new automations, new tactics, new things you can do. Um, there's new ways for you to adapt as you go. So don't get overwhelmed. Take it step by step. So um, to be honest, you can't really complete everything in one day. But even if you could, there's always more to get built. So it's just never going to stop. You're always going to build, 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 build. But it's, a lot of it is a mindset thing, right? So I'm not really a guru. So here's a checklist on like some additional process that basically are a must-have for you. So it's like I'm not really going to hide this from you, but you can use this, right? So 
the, the best thing you should do, guys, is what we essentially do every single week is you should review your processes and systems to identify areas where you can improve them. Ask other people to test them and t ask them to what they think, right? Look for ways to optimize the workflow, eliminate bottlenecks, you know, improve inefficiencies. This is going to help you stay competitive. And again, when markets get saturated, when you're innovating, this is what helps you uh, stay afloat as a, as a business. Um, you know, create weekly team surveys. Ask your team for feedback. Hey, guys, what can we improve? What, what can we make better, right? Implement daily reports for all your team members. Ask them for additional feedback every single time. And you guys will see that you're, you're getting trust from your team. You're building trust with them and you guys are moving ahead because you're asking for feedback and you're building something. You're building a well-oiled system that your whole team can basically rely on you. So now, I, I went through everything, right? Um, I, I went through everything. Everything needs to see, like I told you guys at the beginning, and I've gone as detailed as possible, and hopefully you guys got the value. But I have one little bonus section for you guys, and this is the best advice that I could possibly give you, right? Um, and this is the stuff that no one tells you. So honestly, guys, in this video, you can you can you probably got the value now. Whatever you want to do, um, I highly advise you to to watch this part. So, thing that no one is going to tell you is that. This is not easy, this is not flashy. And if you stayed up until this video, you understand that this is not flashy, this is not simple, this is not easy. This is hard. Things are gonna go wrong. What I just showed you guys, you guys know it's not easy. And I've been telling you guys all the time, this shit is not for people who wanna be beginners and come in and just stop after two weeks. It's not. We've learned this for a long time. We have a lot of templates built out now, right? But it took us time, bro. And this is not easy. But why am I here today? Because at the end of the day, you will and you can't win. You will get your first creator. You will get to 10K a month. You will get rich if you want to, and you can make bank with the market as it is right now. Right? This is all freaking possible, guys. I put this little swearing thing right there before Ramadan. I didn't even realize I did this. I'll take it off. Astaghfirullah. But this is possible, guys. Right? And honestly speaking, bro. I did it, bro. And I'm, I'm going to keep it a stack with you guys. Like, I didn't even think it was possible for me. When I started, I legitimately, bro, did not think it was possible. Yeah, I'm going to, you're probably going to have, you might pay me money someday. Yeah, I want to grow my business. And yeah, I have my own shit. I have my own issues. I'm as normal as all of you guys. But the truth is, you need to sort your shit out, bro. And I'm the same as, I'm legitimately the same as you. Whoever you are watching this video, bro, you probably have way more similarities than you can even imagine. Right? And I guess part of me making this video was because I want it's a video to myself. <laughs> like, it's weird to say, but like, this is, this, this was kind of a video to myself. Like, everything I teach you guys over here is just stuff for myself. It's like, I'll be as honest as possible. Now, I mentioned this part, real life expectation, is that it might take you 30, 45 days to get your first client. It might take you less, it might take you more. But after you get your first creator client and your first result, guys, it's done. You, you, you have case studies in. And all the creators, they have friends that have followers. And they're going to see the money that's being made and they're going to refer you. And you're, you're going to have connections. And you're going to be able to get tapped in. You're going to get more clients. Right? But maybe your clients are going to churn. Maybe it's going to suck. Maybe it'll be painful. But at the end of the day, regardless of what happens, you'll win. So I'm not really here, bro. I'm not here to lie to you. I'm not here to make you believe I can get it in two weeks. No. Possible? Yeah. We literally help people get clients in a day. But is that the norm? Maybe not. And so y'all need to just, bro, embrace it, bro. Like, legitimately speaking, bro, embrace the chaos. Embrace every single thing that's happening in the business and do it. I work for long days, bro. Like, literally, eat a disciplined, healthy diet. Push yourself to physical limits and test exercise. Do whatever it takes to get to the next level. Cut social media out. Cut everything out. Be resilient. Right? And this is all the stuff, guys, that legitimately matters so much. You might lose money investments. You might lose clients. You might lose a lot of time. But as long as you keep on taking action and you keep on... Taking an imperfect, imperfect action again and again and again. You set daylight and accountability. You do all the things you have to do 24-7. You stay consistent. You, you keep it intense. 
right? And you, you basically like whatever failure you have, whatever mistakes you make, it's just a feedback focus. So you need to keep on failing, use it as feedback, simplify and focus everything you need to do. Now, at this point, you need to identify every single impactful action you can take to move forward, right? You need to eliminate and delegate everything else and execute that one with intensity and urgency. It might seem like this is a bunch of, of, of mindset fluff, guys, but this is the important stuff. Embracing chaos, unshakable resilience, taking action, setting deadlines and accountability. Be accountable for yourself. Prioritize consistency over intensity. Some people, they'll just like, you'll go ham for a week and then just stop. If you, ha if you mess up a lot, it's feedback. Simplify, focus, make it simple on yourself to focus. And now you can get back to the Rizzy stuff. And the part you've all been waiting for. So here's my no brainer, anabolic, autistic, <laughs> boss of the wall offer I just made for you. Something I call the growth accelerator. When I created, when we created the growth accelerator, I was inspired by software companies. They'd create these accelerators where they would take on certain companies and they boost them up for four to six weeks and they would just launch them and they'd print, right? And that's how we made the growth accelerator. We leveraged our direct experience, challenges, success, and we basically let you quite literally steal our seven-figure infrastructure so you can close a create a creator deal worth 10K per month over the next 90 days. So now, I know you're ready to take the short lessons from this course and apply them directly to your life. So you can basically just steer your head down and become successful as fast as possible. So over the next 90 days, this is exactly how I'm gonna help you on your first growth partner client and undeniably scale your past 10K per month from one single client. Now, step one, I'm gonna sit down with you and craft your growth operator offer so you can stand out from a thousand other agencies, hell, even 10,000 other agencies. After doing so, we're gonna give you our in-house copywriters who will build out basically outreach scripts and campaigns so you can generate tens of book calls per month. Done for you. We're gonna let you copy our backend systems, CRMs, SOPs, service delivery system, sales processes, so you can not only close creators, but deliver for them a high quality service with a proven work system, so you can keep on getting referrals and predictably scale with more clients. Then, you'll get access to basically our full program with 70 modules we cover in depth on how to successfully scale your growth partner business and become the go-to guy in your niche. You guys get 24 seven support from me and my seven figure marketing, sales and operational department so you can speed up the time frame of your achieving success. Now, when I say 24 seven, this is not gimmicks, bro. I mean 24 seven. Our team is fat, I'm not, our team is fat and you will see, right? We have weekly workshops. We have mastermind calls, including special guests. We have multiple, multiple calls a week and every single call is with a person that has that has had direct impact on my business and that had given, made me a lot of money. Meaning every single one of these people who are hosting calls have a direct impact on you or your clients making more money. Hell, they've had the same experience with me, right? And so you have these masterminds and you even get in-depth training on how other people have scaled their other coaches, high ticket to up to 400K a month, right? So you can basically take away a few pointers of these type of growth, other growth partners, other growth operators that have scaled extremely high and a whole lot more. But now you guys get the offer. You guys probably believe in the offer, but you're asking yourself one little question. Yusuf, so why would you sell a program if you're already making money with your agency? It's simple, it's just lucrative, but why wouldn't I make money by helping people the process I already know on the back of my hand? Why would I not have all these systems? I already have the network, I have everything. Why would I not capitalize off of having product market fit? And off of all the people who DM me asking me for help 24 seven, why would I not take the opportunity? And other thing is guys, I choose to not take on clients. And I literally turn away clients all the time, right? And if you don't believe me, here's some proof. This is, we collected 45K with a brand new high ticket offer with under 3.5K members, right? And last week, legitimately speaking, we pretty much done about 50K. 
right? Why did I copy and paste this twice? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, something I don't really talk about is that huh, when um, when I started like doing this stuff, guys, it was mad lonely. Like when I started working on this business and stuff, it was actually very lonely. Like I was, I can still remember today being in college and just being alone. Because I was like a Muslim, which means like I didn't really like go out with people. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. Anything. And I would just be alone every single day for six months, just working on the biz. And now that we have like the program, it sounds cliche as shit. But a lot of guys in the program, they all become my boys. We travel with them. If you guys see my stories in my YouTube vlogs, like we're all boys now. And it, I genuinely enjoy hopping on calls. I genuinely enjoy helping out people. Because it's basically who I used to be. And maybe, bro, maybe you guys don't relate. Maybe some of you don't relate. Maybe you guys had it easier in the beginning. Maybe your whole family was supportive. But not me. I, I find purpose in, in just working with a lot of you guys and helping you guys, right? We kick it with the boys. We all travel together, right? Literally, I forgot to put in a picture, but I have mad pictures of like just me with the boys. I was traveling London, doing our interviews together, just doing a bunch of stuff. I, I flew all the way to London to connect with some of the boys. Right. And if you guys want extra proof, here's Zach. He scaled to basically 12K within like 30 days. Right. I ran you guys earlier through Muhi, Susue, Adrian. Right. And Zach literally told us him and his business partner, Isaiah, they spent 80K on education for last year. And our product has been the best. And they're working with creators of over 3 million followers, guys. Now, meet Nate. He was a creator. Right. He made 10K his first week cash collected. Right. Legit. It's just using our system. Guys, he was doing DoorDash before. He says, hey, I want to give a huge shout out to you and the team. I went from driving DoorDash, literally traveling the world and connecting people that I look up to. And guys, I don't want to keep on clickbaiting you, but Adrian, legit 45% of revenue with a 38,000 follower code within the first six days in the French market. Sue, legit, the first couple of days he comes on, 3K. 8.6K cash collected for this is the first month he joined. Right? And now he's at 40K cash collected. Max, legitimately, he scaled his first client to 30K with 45% revenue share. He says, what? Well, Malcolm Yusuf has taught me so much about this growth operating operation biz. The reason I've seen leaps of bounds of progress in my entrepreneurial journey. Now I have a client with 100,000 followers highly engaged as well. He made 5K in a day with terrible implementation off of what Malcolm used to teach, right? And it's a gold mine once you actually do the way, Malcolm. And basically, like, um, what was I going to say? doing what Malcolm used to say, right? And now with that being said, you guys are probably like wondering, you know, you guys are, you guys are wondering, how do I get access to all this? Now it's fairly simple. Obviously you have to be somewhat qualified, but you'll be speaking to me. You're not gonna be talking to a elite advisor. You're gonna be talking to some weird person, but you'll be speaking to me. And additionally, if we chat and I think the fit is right and you're not an absolute um, slow person and you're actually willing to put in the work and you understand this is not going to be as easy as you think it's going to be you get a 14 day trial with our lead sourcing tool it will be we give you a bunch of leads for free right and you'll be able to get your first client as fast as possible so now truthfully what are you waiting for the link is right here for a lot of you guys if it's not right here it'll be under right if it's not right here it'll be right here you guys can copy and paste over here right if you want to copy and paste you can copy and paste it Boom, screenshot, copy and paste, and book a call to talk with me. And by my team, y'all see the name, Yusuf Chatsky. So guys, what are you waiting for? If you're like me in college, it's probably time you go all in. If you watch up until this time right now, it's probably time you go all in and say today's the day. And if you feel like today's the day, and if you feel like you're being hesitant and you're not really sure 100%, let's have a chat. Maybe, maybe I won't feel like if it's a good fit. And if not, then it's fine. I'll, I'll give you guys a bunch of free resources and we can go from there and I'll give you as much information as possible. I will work with you hands-on and guarantee you get 10K per month in 90 days because I know you've done it before and, and I know I can do it again for a lot of you. So guys, I'll see you on the other side. I'm on my alarm about it to all the Muslims. I generally wish you guys the best. I generally do.
it's like 5 30 right now and i'm still here but every day that is like this i just remember my good old days when i when i first used to hustle for the first bucks that i'm making my first agency so whether you guys choose to make the move or not choose to or not i don't judge you any type of way i generally hope the best for you guys and this is video one Maybe for if this is your video one for you, I hope you get more value from my other videos. And if this is your other uh, tenth video for me, I appreciate you for still being here. Sub to the YouTube. I spent a lot of time doing this, so I'd highly appreciate any sub if you if you guys found any value. And if you guys have any more questions, comment on my YouTube. If you want to ask any questions, go over my Instagram. If you feel like you want to give it a shot, if you want to become a, a high ticket growth operator, and you want to make uh, as much as we do right now, then book a call with me. We'll have a chat. I appreciate you guys. Uh, if you set up until now, it means a lot. Talk to you guys soon.